you know, I always encourage people to download my videos, share my videos. I don't mind if you make money, like advertising, etc. That's not, not the problem for me. I want to go ahead and bring in my guests that's already here with us and uh, want them to introduce themselves to my listening audience and uh, two Muslim scholar experts. Their panel of experts is here. I want to give you gentlemen an opportunity to introduce yourself and give us a little background about yourself and so forth until my other guests get here. Well, we thank you first for the invitation. Just a correction, we are Muslim, and we ask Allah to give us some knowledge and to be from those among the Muslims. I am Dr. Nabil Bayakli, and I am an adjunct professor of uh, Islamic theology at Memphis Theological Seminary here in Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. Well, good evening. My name is Malik. I am the imam right now of Masjid al-Salam which is the Memphis Muslim Society, or the Muslim Society of Memphis. And I'm here today. Uh, we welcome this opportunity of coming to your show. And hopefully this will be a very fruitful panel and discussion. Then we may all learn from one another. Thank you for inviting us. You are more than welcome. Uh, glad to have you all. I want to thank you first uh, for accepting the invitation. I, I know it was a short notice, but uh, I do want to thank you all for honoring the request, and I thought it would be just more than fair to allow a representative uh, from the Islamic faith, religion, to come and engage in this particular debate. I think we're going to have a great time tonight. Uh, there is sound. Uh, uh, those who in the audience are listening now, if you have any problem with the sound, we want to go ahead and get all the technical problems out of the way. And uh, I'm going to bring in also my other great Christian scholar. Are oh, you there? I am here. How are you doing, sir? Great. Great to have you on uh, here in the debate. Uh, I do have the other gentlemen here. And uh, there again, they just introduced themselves uh, here from Memphis Theological Seminary uh, School. I want to give those guys uh, another opportunity. Christian, first, I want. I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself to my listening audience. Everybody's sitting waiting, waiting to go. But if you can uh, give us a little background about yourself, uh, Christian first, and uh, we'll allow them to okay. give their... Okay, no problem. Well, you know, uh, I don't like to talk about me too much because I like to go straight to the topic. But uh, anyway, I am an Arab Christian who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And I have degrees in the religion. It's called Islam. So I hope that your guest, the one you have in your show, uh, they are people who they can help us to understand what Islam is about. And as you told me, the topic today is, is the Quran is the book of God. So I would like to hear from your guest whatever they want to say to us as a proof or what is making the Quran is the book of God. As an example, what the reason for Quran to come. It is true that the Muslims, they say to us, always, we, you know, they say to us, that the Quran came because the Bible is corrupted. So I will start with this question with your guest, and I say hello to them. Assalamu alaikum. And I, and I would like to hear the answer. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, let, me, let me jump in real quick. I want to make sure, do anybody hear any echo in the background? No. No echo. Okay, good. want to make sure that there are no echoes in the background. And uh, I think we're ready to go. Those who are just tuning in to the Black Conservative Show here on Blog Talk Radio, we bring you the best possible source. This is your one stop for truth. We deal with the actual facts, the hard facts, not stubborn facts. This show was designed and created to inform and educate our callers caller and listeners on the facts. So what is the truth? Truth is not based on an emotion. It is not based on a feeling, a feeling, but truth is based on the facts. And for those who believe in the inspired word of God, truth is based on the word of God. So we have put together this debate tonight. 
Uh, I have uh, on both sides uh, the spectrum, uh, Muslims uh, from the Islamic faith, and a representative of Christianity. And we're going to go and, and get ready to engage in the debate. Uh, each individual would have uh, 90 seconds to give a rebuttal if you have an objection uh, to what your opponent is saying. You have uh, you would have uh, 90 seconds to give a response back. Also, uh, at the start of the debate, you will be allowed five minutes to give an open presentation on both sides. And after that five minutes presentation, then we will go into the rebuttal where you would have 90 seconds to rebut back and forth. And if they go like that for the next hour and a half, uh, the rules are. And I don't think I have to enlighten any of you all on the rules, uh, is to stick with the issue, stick with the facts, no ad hominem, ad hominem attacks, no personal attacks, but stick with the person's uh, argument at hand and address that person's argument. And uh, I think we'll all uh, be happy campers with that. And we're going to uh, deal with that here on the Black Conservative Show. Going to take a little short break, a little short break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to start uh, this discussion. Is the Quran the Word of God? Here on the Black Conservative Show, hold tight, callers. We'll be right back. And, 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 and. All right, we're back here on the Black Conservative Show, getting ready to start the debate. Uh, gentlemen, you can give a five-minute uh, presentation. And then uh, Christian Prince is going to come behind them. And after the five-minute presentation of the opening argument, then we're going to a 90-minute uh, respond and rebuttal to the objections one may have concerning the position of their opponent. Again, those who have just tuned into the Black Conservative Show uh, want to welcome you to the debate tonight between Muslims uh, and Christians here on the on Blog Talk Radio. All right, my guest is going to the listeners is going to go first, and uh, guys, we're going to hear what you have to say. You have five minutes. Go ahead. All right, thank you once again, and we say wa alaikum salam to also the other guests on the other end. And uh, like I said earlier, we welcome this opportunity to be able to speak to you. And what we're going to say is more to the audience huh, because we know our guest probably is as knowledgeable as um, probably we are about the Quran to really know that it is a true word of God. Through history, because many things, if you want to understand how things are, you usually have to go to history. And when you go back to history, it helps you better understand the present time or whatever is occurring right in front of you. Uh, God we call him Allah as he called himself Allah and other people from other religious um, affiliation would also call him another name. Therefore, he is the one who is the creator and we know that and everybody agree to that. As there are only three things that a person may question and many of the philosophers question the three and ask about the origin of man and also what man is doing here on earth and where man is going after death. We know for sure that if one exists, that means he is either the result of creation or of evolution. But still, mankind, everybody believes that they are the fruit of creation. And when we talk about creation, there is always a creator and also creature. Meaning the creator must be the supreme being, the one who caused anything else to exist besides him. Therefore, he is the one who created everybody he is as the one who created Adam and Eve and Noah and all prophets and messengers, you name them, as it is shown in the Bible or in the Quran, he must be the sender 
of all prophets and messengers, peace be upon them all. Now, why did God send prophets like Noah, or send Abraham, or send Moses, or send Jesus, or any other prophet in between them, or after them? That means God had a message to take to people, and since he is a perfect being, and not equal to what he has created, therefore he has to bring a person who is like us, as he said in the Quran, if we were angels, then he would of course send an angel. Now, then there should be a message coming from that God to mankind, and the purpose of the message is to have mankind recognize how much of nothing they are and how great Almighty God Allah is so that they can submit to that one and true God who has no partner. So then he sent prophets and sent messengers and gave them books. So those books among them, or the most famous among them, is the Torah or you can say also the, 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 the Gospel or any other book that has been mentioned, mentioned in revealed books or in the Qur'an. Now, is the Qur'an the Word of God? And I would say, is the Qur'an the Word of Allah? Because not everything named God is Allah, because Allah is unique. Therefore, to answer that question, I would like to take you and I all and the audience, and I thank them once again for turning in to listen to us, that the Word of God is always a miracle. And not only a miracle, but also the miracle of the miracle. And what a miracle is, it is something which is beyond man's imagination. Or something which is, uh, goes over the human mentality that they cannot comprehend sometimes. Then when that happens, they know this is a miracle. Like, if a person dies and another person raises him from the dead, we say this is a miracle because that is very strange and is beyond the imagination of mankind. Therefore, for God to send a message to the people, that message has to be a miracle. So Moses received a book, and in that book, God, Allah, revealed to Moses how he was dealing with actually Pharaoh and the magicians that Pharaoh invited. So Moses, as he was holding onto his stick, actually performed with the permission of God a miracle which of course would prove to his people that this is not from man, this must come from a being more perfect than us. And Jesus was sent to the people of Israel. And Jesus came, and it was a time when sicknesses or illnesses were very serious, and science uh, were not developed in a way to heal people. So he came as a healer. Then he could raise a person from the dead and make a blind to see and make a limping man to walk. So this miracle showed that what he had was not from God. Now when it comes to Prophet Muhammad and all the Prophet peace were from them, yes, he was in a time when actually Arab people or the world was moving to another step, to another stage, which was about literature or poetry or anything related to man uh, intellectual uh, 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 starters. Now the intellectuality of man at the time was taking them to sometimes speaking a language that people or even the Arabs and I know our friend on the other hand uh, on the other end of the line will understand what I'm saying that even uh, Arabs who were pure Arabs sometimes could not really understand some of the verses or the words of the Quran and it was revealed to one who has never been to school, they don't know how to read or write. How could we speak such a language which was actually going beyond people's understanding or imagination that he had to actually break it down in order to reach the subconsciousness of the people at that very time? Okay, now, that must be time. Okay, that's five minutes there. 
Uh, thank you very much. Five minutes, Sarah. Now we're going to allow Christian Prince to give uh, his presentation and a rebuttal or respond uh, for five minutes to what was just said and what Christian Prince has done. Then we will narrow it down the back and forward cross-examination to 90 minutes. Whoa, <laughs> not 90 minutes, but 90 seconds. And uh, after that, we'll be able to, we're going to take some questions and call to probably after the last 30 minutes of the show or 20 minutes of the show. Christian Prince, you are on, you have five minutes to uh, make your case. Okay, thank you very much. I want to say thank you for, uh, uh, I don't know his name, by the way, if you can tell me his name, I would be uh, glad to know I'm talking to who. His name is Jamal Malik. Uh, Jamal Malik, how are you doing, Jamal? Uh, yeah, how are you? Know, you? First, I'm fine, thank you. You know, first of all, proving a religion is not about giving a speech about uh, we don't believe in evolution. And I'm, I'm not an atheist. I'm a Christian. So we believe in God, and we believe that this universe created by God. So there's no need to go and talk about those who speak that, oh, you know what, things happen by accident. Let us go to the topic. You said that the miracles of Muhammad is the Quran. Now, the Quran says, if this book is not from God, you will find in it a lot of contradiction. If it's not from Allah. And we will show everybody with us that this book is not only having contradiction, it's full of it. Actually, it's a, it's a huge book of contradiction. But before we go there, we want to know why Islam even came, what the reason of Muhammad to become a prophet. Everything have a reason. You know, I don't think God, he just sent prophets for fun. He sent them for a reason. Now, before Islam, there is a lot of prophets who came. According to Islam, there is 124,000 prophets. Imagine, 124,000 prophets. According to Islam, Muhammad is the last one. He is the final, and this is the end. That's it. There is no more prophets to come. But we need to know why Allah decided to send this man to be the last prophet and what was wrong. Because, as you see, for sure there was something very wrong. 124,000 less one, which means Muhammad, all of them, they could not accomplish anything. All of them, they could not save anyone. All their books is gone. All their books is corrupted. And there is only one, only one, he is going to do what 124,000 almost, they could not do. For us as a Christian, when we look at the picture, we see there is something wrong in there. Why Allah is sending all those prophets when they will not do anything? What they accomplish, all of them. What Moses did, he did nothing according to Islam. What Jesus did, he did nothing according to Islam. So why Allah is sending them? And before we go there, I would like to ask you, when you start responding to me, to answer a very specific question. The question is, is it true what the Muslims, they say to us, that Allah, the God of Islam, He sent Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, because the Bible of the Christian was corrupted? Is that because of the corruption of that book? Or Allah, He was going to send him anyway, if the Bible is corrupted or not? I want a clear answer. I give the rest of my time to our guest, uh, Jamal. And let us see what he will say as an answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You can now give your 90 second rebuttal to what he just said there. Go ahead. All right. Um, thank you very much once again for that question. I think we are not here to discuss whether the Bible was corrupted or not. We would like to also remain in what the topic is, and we will demonstrate now. If we ask the question, is the, is the Qur'an the word of Allah or the word of God, then whoever does not see it as the word of God should bring their argument and demonstrate that it is not the word of God. But we are not here to talk about the Bible. If you want to talk about the Bible, you can invite us one other time and we will talk about the Bible. And I'll introduce my brother, Dr. Nabil, to go ahead and bring clarification on that.
Well, to say that the Quran descended just because the Bible was corrupt, that's not really a, uh, a proper statement according to Islamic creed. Uh, Allah revealed the Quran as the Quran says to us, Alif Lam Mim, Zalik al Kitab, Ulay Ray Bafi, Hudan bin Muttafi, which means that that book is no doubt in it, uh, the guidance for those who are righteous. So that's Allah revealed the Quran as a guidance to mankind, not because the, uh, the, uh, the, the Bible uh, or because of the other prophets couldn't do anything. That's not, that is a fallacy. That, uh, that in Islam, we don't believe in that. We believe that all prophets and messengers were sent with a, with a proper message, and uh, they did fulfill what, uh, what the purpose of their life was. Uh, so we do not uh, believe that all the 124,000, yes, uh, 124,000 prophets and messengers that were sent, we don't believe that uh, they didn't fulfill their uh, uh, duties and their missions. No, we do believe that they fulfilled their missions. All right, guys, I'm going to have to jump in. We have 90 seconds there. Uh, we want to keep it rolling. Uh, you can always come back and, and uh, pick up from there. Uh, go ahead. Christian friends that you have uh, in there. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Well, uh, I'm not uh, going over the Bible just uh, to debate about the Bible. The reason I'm asking because supposedly there is a reason for the Prophet of Islam to come. If the Prophet of Islam he is coming just to complete what it was before him, this is mean that the Bible was corrupted. If the Bible was corrupted, this is the reason of Muhammad to come to you know to, to complete what it was missing. There's something wrong happened, and this is why he came. But anyway, we will not waste our time as long as we don't like to talk about this topic. I want to ask them. First time the Prophet of Islam he saw an angel, and this angel supposedly it was Gabriel. What was the proof for Muslims that it was Gabriel? According to the books of Islam. Muhammad he did not prove anything about himself that he is a person who saw an angel except what happened to him with his wife Khadija. When he saw an angel, he did not know that this is an angel. So he asked his wife that I am seeing someone. And she told him, when you see him again, let me know. Then she asked him to do something very weird. I'm going to post the link. Somebody else will post it for me. Christ first will post it in the chat. So I, I want your guest to open and read with me, please, and read for us, all of us, what is the book of Asira is saying there. This is Sayyid Ibn Hisham, volume number one, the name of the chapter, Imtihanu Khadija Burhan al -Wahi. The proof or the test Khadija she did to prove the inspiration of Allah. And there you will see Khadija, she is asking the Prophet to sit in the top of her right leg. Then she asked him, do you still see that guy in the room? He said, yes. Then she asked him to move, first, sorry, first for the left leg. Then she asked him to the right leg. And each time she asked him, still you see him? Each time he said, yes, I see him. Then she asked him, after taking off her uh, whatever clothes or whatever she is having, and she asked him to sit in the top of her, asking him, do you still see him? He said, no. She said, the glory to Allah, this is an angel. I never heard about an angel. He did not announce himself to his prophet saying, I am an angel. And I never heard about a prophet. He go to his wife and he said to her, I need you to tell me if this is an angel or not. I suppose he is a prophet. And if you look at the way she proved to him that he is a prophet, when she asked him to sit in the top of her, she said to him, do you still see him? He said, no. She said, the glory to Allah, this is an angel. Now, what sitting in the top of his wife has to do to prove to us that this is, was an angel? The mic is yours. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Christian Prince, for this uh, genuine question. Uh, and I'm glad, I hope that the audience are really listening carefully. Uh, when the Prophet ﷺ received the first message, Iqra, he was in the uh, cave of Iraq. And right there, actually, uh, he himself was scared. And he didn't know what he was seeing. When he ran to his house, and Khadija, his wife, Khadija al-Kubra, 
was known for her shim, for her wisdom, and for her knowledge, and for her education. So the Prophet ﷺ coming home trembled and uh, scared. He was telling his wife, Zam miluni, zam miluni, which means hide me, hide me, because he was very scared of what he had seen. He never seen an angel before. And Archangel Gabriel ﷺ had told him, I am Gabriel. I am the angel of Allah, and I am saying, telling you that you are going to be the message, you are going to be the messenger for this Ummah, for the nation of Prophet Muhammad and for this world. So it's not that uh, Prophet Muhammad didn't get the message first from Jibreel, but being the Prophet the way, the humble nature of the Prophet وسلم, he was saying himself, he was saying, that I don't know if I am seeing any, uh, I'm hearing voices and I'm seeing uh, things. So he himself wasn't really sure. So when he came to Khadija radiallahu anha, Khadija, uh, having knowledge of the people of Ahl al-Kitab and other nations, which means the Jews and the Christians and al-Hanif, al din al-Hanif, which means the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, then she knew an angel is not going to be present at the time when a man is going to have a privacy with his wife. So when she told him, sit on my right side, that's okay, the angel can be there. When she told him, sit on the left side, then that's okay, the angel can be there. But when she told him to sit in a position as a husband would be sitting with his wife, then the angel, out of uh, respect and honor for for this for the for the relationship of a husband and wife, then the angel would leave them for their own privacy. Now, okay, what's the problem is over a woman. What's that, the problem? I think the pro the brother the uh, Christian have a problem with a husband listening to his wife. For us, this is the biggest lesson that you and your wife are two of one that you always ask your wife and ask for some uh, guidance from her as well. And that okay, takes time's away up. all the fallacies about Islam that they treat the wife as a second class. Okay, right. time's up. Thank you for your question. Okay, good. A uh, little bit over 90 seconds there. Uh, Chris and friends, you go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you. He, you know, he said, and uh, uh, as we understand from what he said, that when the Prophet, he have a sexual position with his wife, the angel he decide to leave. Now then, how Khadija, she learned that angels don't stay if there is sex in the room. Like, you know, me, myself, I am an adult man, I never heard that angels will leave me, so what if I am having sex with my wife? You know, she, he's an angel, he will not get uh, excited, he will not get, uh, forgive me for the word, horny, he is he's an angel. You know, and according to Islam, angels always is found in you, wherever you go. There's two angels, one in the left and one in the right. So even when you have sex, they are with you. Even Muhammad, he said, before you have intercourse with your wife, you have to say the word bis bismillah and, you know, seek refuge of Allah. So Allah will protect you. How will he protect you? Because the angels will keep the Satan away from you. So angels even with you, according to your prophet, even when you have sex. So there is no reason for the angel to get out. This is number one. Number two, you said that the angel told him, I am Jibreel. I want you to show me that. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. I will post it. I want you to open the link, please. Hadith number 4626, Kitab al-Tafsir. There is nowhere when Muhammad, he saw the angel first time, that the angel, he said to him, you know what, I am Jibreel. Actually, Jibreel, he did not mention his name at all. He started right away. He came to Muhammad. He said to him, read. And you will see something there too, very weird in this story. He starts squeezing him. Now, if I asked you what the squeezing have to do with an angel speaking to his prophet, I do not know what you will say to me. But still, I want you to read again, please, the hadith I posted, because I cannot go and log on in the chat. Somebody else is posting the hadith for me. So I want you, please, to open the link and read for me. And you will see that Muhammad, until that time, he never heard of, of the name Jibreel. He had no idea. And the one who told him about who is the name of the angel, it was Waraq ibn Nawfal. Waraq ibn Nawfal, he is the one who said, oh, this is Jibreel. So what you said to me with my respect to you is absolutely not true. 
Secondly, what we see in here, that the family of his wife, they are the one who is deciding that, okay, you know what, you are a prophet, and this is an angel. And even they gave him the name. Now, how Waraqab bin Nufal he knew? He is a prophet. He was inspired. How many prophets in Islam? It's supposed it's only one, and the one is Muhammad. So what do you like to say to me, sir? Mike is yours. May I go ahead? Yeah, please. All right, thank you very much. First of all, Waraqat ibn Nawfal did not mention to him that this is Jibreel. Waraqat said to him, this is what used to come to Musa. And I wish I were there when your people will chase you away from this city in order to help you. The hadith you are referring to in Sahih al-Bukhari is an authentic hadith and I wish that you would go and read the hadith again word by word in order to better understand as you are an Arab and me not an Arab being able to understand this Arabic language could clearly see that what you are saying word to word is not actually what the hadith is talking about. Now, in order for somebody to tell Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him that he, what the, 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 the creature of God he so he did not see Jibreel as is, as he is, but he looked at his right and left, but see that Jibreel actually covers all area, he could not see Jibreel as is, as Allah created him. The only one time he saw Jibreel as he was was in the Isra wal Mi'raj when they reached the room Zaha. And I will come to that if you want later to show the authenticity of the word of God as a miracle that people can clearly understand. Now back to your question. You are using Sahih al-Bukhari. So if you think that the revelation that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him brought is not true, so how you as an Arab who understands Arabic want to use that same revelation in order to contradict this revelation if contradict is there as you can see. But no way. But you are using this because you know for sure that this is a good reference that you can turn to in order to justify whatever misunderstanding or misinterpretation or miscomprehension you may have on the verses of the Quran. Now back to our topic because we do not want to step away from our topic dealing with Hadith while we have the verses of God in the Quran that is the very fire of the truth in the Bible in our book. I'm glad that this is not our topic today. We would like to debate this one more time with you. But I want you, with all due respect, to show me in the Quran, as you said earlier, that it is a book of ikhtilaf. It is a book of full of contradiction. Show me, pick up the Quran. I understand and I know you must have one right in front of you. Open the Quran and show me where in the Quran has Allah revealed verses contradicting one to another. And I may today and hope but from this session, from this time, you will understand the language of Arabic better today. Okay, time is up. Now, let me say this here uh, to uh, the Muslim representatives. I don't think the Hadi is, is off limit here. And the reason why I say the Hadi is not off limit, because uh, it is uh, second in authority to the Quran. There are Muslims who quote the Hadi. Of course, they quote parts of the Hadi that they think is in agreement with the Quran. Uh, so I don't think quoting the Hadi is off limits here. If I may bring clarification to you, I think we all understand the English language because the topic is, is the Quran the Word of God? If you say, is the Quran and Hadith a revelation from God? Yes, then we can open that window in order to look through it. But you mentioned the Quran and the Quran is a book from chapter 1 to chapter 114. This is why I brought okay, that okay, sentence okay, so Jamal, I think it's my time now. I think it's my time. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Go Thank ahead. You, Jamal. I don't think Jamal, first, the first, here. Yeah. first I want you to open Jamal. Jamal, I want you first to open the hadith I post for you in the chat. And you will see there it says the name Jibreel. He said to him, this is the same as the angel who came to Moses. And it's between two brackets, the name Jibreel. But I understand you don't want to go there. The reason I mention this, because Muslims, 
when they say to us the prophet of Islam is a prophet, as you see, it's not even him. He do not know he is a prophet yet. It is people who they are saying to him he is a prophet. And not only that, you will see that the prophet of Islam himself, he imagines things. You know, there's a hadith even, there's many hadith. They are saying that the prophet used to imagine himself doing things, including having sexual intercourse with his wife when he never did. A hadith in Al-Bukhari saying it clearly. The prophet used to imagine himself doing things he never ever did. Now, how I can trust a man? He always imagined things happen to him, but he never did it. I will pause the hadith too for this one from Sahih al-Bukhari. And you will see in your eyes that the prophet he was not knowing what he is doing. And when the, a man he reached the point, he say things or he do things, he himself do not know what he is doing, it means there is something wrong about him. You know, right now if I go and I want to join any job, and I say to them, oh, I imagine it was happening. And people, they will say, with my respect to you, I'm not trying to insult, they will say, you know what, you are crazy. Now, how I can trust the prophet of Islam words that he saw someone because he is the only one seeing that one. It is what his wife and her cousin, Waraka, saying, oh, his name is Jibreel, and you know what, you are a prophet. But anyway, as long you are the one who mentioned to us, you want to go to the contradiction, and you mentioned in the first, in the, in the opening, the name of the Pharaoh. I want you to open with me chapter Yunus, verse number 90, and you will see in there, it says that the Pharaoh became a Muslim. He believed in Allah. If you go to chapter, 17, chapter Isra 17, verse number 102, 103, you will see that the Pharaoh, he died and he was still an infidel. He is a Kafir. And this is a contradiction. I think my time, I don't know if my time is still up, but I would like to hear about this one so we can continue in more contradiction. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Prince, for this valuable uh, remark. The Quran never states that Fir'aun, uh, has ever became a Muslim. Uh, I think you have some kind of uh, understanding is that because as Fir'aun was about, was about to die, was about to drown, as he was following uh, Musa and his, uh, the Israelites, uh, then he says, I am meant to be Rabbi Musa. He says, I believe in the Lord of Musa because he saw death. He knew that he couldn't really touch Musa alayhi salam and he's not able to get after the Israelites. And that the Lord of Musa alayhi salam was able to save Musa. So he didn't say these statements out of belief. He said these statements out of that he came to the realization of them. So thus, uh, that does not make a, a person becoming a Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ says that the man will take his, uh, his iman will be accepted as long as he doesn't get to the state of ghargara, which means the state in which he sees the soul or realizes the soul is about to come out. That's, that's too late now. And Fir'aun is the biggest example actually for us. And I'm glad that you brought this uh, confusion that you have. So hopefully it will be clarified for you. That really as Muslims and as we read the Quran and as we pray with the Quran and as we recite the Quran, it's never, never told, we never to believe that Fir'aun uh, was or became a Muslim and followed uh, the message of Musa alayhi salatu Okay, time's up. Thank you. Christian friends, you go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Well, you know, if you read with me, it says it clearly, آمنت أنه لا إله إلا الذي آمنت به بن آمنت به بن إسرائيل وأنا من المسلمين. I am a Muslim, and this is in here. There is no sword. There is no sword in here. This is not somebody putting a sword in your neck saying to you either you became a Muslim. It was a choice he made because he saw that this is the truth and this is what the Quran is saying. And in the top of that, why we don't go and read the explanation? And the explanation will decide to us if he became a Muslim or not. If you open Ibn Kathir or Al-Qurtubi or Al-Jalalain, you will see that Ibn Kathir, he agreed that the Pharaoh, he accepted Islam and he became a Muslim. So what you are saying to me, really, it's not what the explanation 
you know, saying. Especially he's saying, وَكَفَرْنَا بِمَا كُنَّا بِهِ مُشْرِكِينَ فَلَمْ يَكُوا يَنْفَعُهُمْ إِيمَانَهُمْ لَمَّا رَأُوا بَأْسَنَا سُنَّةُ اللَّهِ لَكِ خَلَتْ فِي عِبَادِهِ وَخَسِرَ هُنَالِكَ الْكَافِرُونَ So, open the explanation and you will see that you are wrong in that point. So, I made my first point about contradiction regarding the Pharaoh. Now, if I ask... No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to, to, to interrupt. You haven't made your first point about contradiction because you haven't shown any contradiction in there. Because we're trying to correct you. You have a misunderstanding of even the Arabic language. I'm sorry, uh, even if you are an Arab. Because uh, earlier when you mentioned the Hadir in Bukhari saying that there is the word Jibril in there, you yourself mentioned Jibril in between brackets. Meaning, that word Jibril is not from the Hadith, but it is from the one who wrote the Hadith to explain to you that that means Jibril, but the word Jibril did not come out of the mouth of Waraka ibn Nawfal. That's why, and the verses you just mentioned in Surah to Yunus, and once again, when you mention for just the audience, and for the respect we, have, we owe to the audience for them to go back and read for themselves, please mention to them the number of the ayah and the chapter because they will need to go back and see exactly the truth of what you say or maybe the misunderstanding that you have on these verses. And to proceed, if I, if I may, because I interrupted you, or I will let you clean up okay, and then I'll come back. Let me just, let me just hit here, guys. Let me jump in here real quick. <laughs> uh, we lose a little bit of momentum. Tiny second response. This each side have 90 seconds to respond by. I'm giving you just a little more time than 90 seconds, maybe about 120 seconds. But there again, uh, that's limited to 90 seconds. We want to give a proper response back. Go ahead, uh, Chris. Chris, you you now have okay. 90 seconds to okay. give a response. Okay, thank you. First, he just agreed that the one who wrote the hadith, he put between two brackets the word Jibreel. Now, are you going to say it's my fault to see the word Jibreel and don't, do you want me not to read it? If it's not there, the Muslim should be honest in, in, in their words and not to add words does not exist. If the hadith doesn't say Jibreel, why you add it? It doesn't make sense. This is not honest by adding words for something, put it in the mouth of somebody and this is especially it's about the Prophet himself. You know, secondly, I posted the hadith, and actually I posted the website, and I posted the hadith number. I said, chapter Yunus, which is number 10, verse number 90. And this is a Jalalain. I will post for you a Jalalain. I will post for you Ibn Kathir. I hope they are posting it for you in the, ch in the, in the chat there. And you can open and you can see. It doesn't say that he did not become a Muslim. It's saying the opposite. It's saying he accepted Islam. He embraced Islam. So you, what you are saying to me is not true. And you know, it, it, it's really weird that the Muslims suddenly they don't accept their own explanation. The scholars of Islam, the highest scholars of Islam, they do not know Islam suddenly. And you are the one right now is going to correct a Jalalain. So what do you think about what Jalalain is saying in the front of your eyes? The mic is yours. Okay. Uh uh, Mr. Prince, uh, we will read the verse for you, and then we will read the translation, so that the audience will see if there was a misunderstanding on your side, or is it that something that we are saying? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan wal-jim, bismillahi rahman rahim Ajawadna bi bani Israel al-bahra fa'asba'ahum fir'aun wa junooduhu badiyan wa adwa Hatta ida adrakahu al-gharaku qala amantu annahu la ilaha illa alladhi amanat bihi banu Israel wa ana min al-muslimin The next verse, which that's how you read the Qur'an in context, says Al ana wa qad aqayta qablu wa kunta min al-mufsidin Which means, we took the children of Israel across the sea, Pharaoh and his hosts followed them in insolence and spite. When overwhelmed with the flood, he said, I believe that there is no God except him whom the children of Israel believe in. I am of those who submit. And that in the next verse, Allah is answering back here. Allah is answering back in the verse 91. And that's how you read the Quran in context. It was said to him, Oh no, now! But a little while before, wasn't the rebellion, 
and the right, second just second violence okay. uh, up there, Chris and Chris, go ahead. You have 90 seconds. Okay, well, well you know, uh, Mr. Jamal, I did post for you a Jalalain, and you did not read a Jalalain, because simply a Jalalain agree with me and don't agree with you. But I understand, you know, still you want to defend your religion, I understand that. Let us move to something else. According to your prophet, in the Quran, in uh, Surah Al-Tariq, he is saying, and I will post Ibn Kathir as an explanation. So nobody can say, you know what, you have a wrong explanation. This is Ibn Kathir, I hope they will post it for you in there. I want you to open with me, please. And you will see your prophet saying that the human being, he is created from a gushing fluid coming from the backbone and the ribs. According to the explanation, it was the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women. Now, if I want to ask you, please, what is coming from the backbone of the man and what is coming from the ribs of the women? And I want you, to please, to open and read for me what your prophet himself is saying and what is written in the explanation of Abhikathir. And as you see, I'm not explaining your Quran and I have no right to explain the Quran because the Quran says only the ulama can explain the Quran and Allah and this is the ulama, this is Ibn Kathir and this is the hadith of your prophet so please let us concentrate not you explaining, not me explaining let us go by the scholars and whatever they say we should accept I would like you to open that page and read for us please the whole page, thank you thank you once again for that um, a verse in Surah al tariq which is uh, uh, one of the chapters of the Quran. And the verse you read was verse 6 and 7 for our audience to hear what we are saying. Allah says in the Quran, خُلِقَ مِمَّا إِنْ دَافِقَ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ Allah says he is uh, created meaning man, of course, is created from a drop emitted proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. Listen to the word. From between the backbone and the ribs. He is not telling you from the backbone. He is not telling you from the ribs. The word bayna, you know Arabic, is very significant in here. Now, since you have, of course, this opportunity to deal with about the creation of God, we would like to show you what in the world, in the 7th century, could determine what science has discovered these days about how a human being... Okay, guys, hold that south. The uh, 90 seconds is up there. Hold that south. No, brother, I'll, I'll, I want to give him, I want to give him my time. Go ahead, no, no, no. I want to give him my time as a gift to him because still he has to make a point, and I think it's uh, it's his right to answer more. So I will give you my extra minute for you to answer me. Please go and read the explanation of Ibn Kathir. Don't tell me about science, please. Ibn Kathir is giving us the answer. Let us read first Ibn Kathir. Uh, Ibn Kathir. That, Ibn Kathir is only one of the interpreters. He's not the final reference. There are, we have many other interpreters as well. And I thank you very much for you giving me your time. That means you are willing to learn tonight. Now, to proceed, Allah says, Baina, and I was telling you, how do you want to avoid science as an intellectual? If you want to prove things today and nowadays, Quran has given you the opportunity on the 7th century to your ancestors to know what science could not even bring up at the very moment. But I'm telling you that what Quran is saying today was explained clearly and in detail by science and you go and study embryology, you will see what Allah has said as is today what the scientists have brought up as an explanation. Now, for you and I who are not scientists, we will be very happy to read in between these words and understand that Allah, God, the way He created you and I in a very sophisticated way with the mixture of elements from our bodies, as He said, 
between the backbone and the wrist. Now your question was, what is coming from the backbone or from the ribs? And I corrected you, say, it is not coming from the backbone or from the ribs. It is coming be between the backbone and the ribs. Now then you correct your, and your question. If you want to really understand, we proceed as Allah says, إِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَجْعِهِ لَقَادِ Surely God is able to bring him back to life. Okay, now, 10 minutes seconds. I had to cut you off there. Uh, Thank you. Um, so they don't want to read Ibn Kathir because Ibn Kathir will prove that this is a very huge mistake. If you go and open with me, it says it clearly. As you said, you are saying from between, this is the point you are making, right? From between the ribs and the backbone. You know, why Allah he did not say from between the, the, the toes and the nose? This is a huge area, you know? What is left between the backbone and the ribs? Now, I want to ask you, if you read with me, Ibn Kathir, he is saying that the fluid of the women, it's gushing fluid, it is light yellow texture. It is a yellow texture. This is your prophet explanation, and he's saying there, the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women is the fluid, is a yellow fine in texture, the child will not be born except from both of them. Now, what is the yellow texture is coming from whatever place you want will make the baby created. The egg is not a yellow texture, and the, the egg is not a fluid. And what is your prophet describing, forgive us, you know, guys, for using the language, it's simply when the women, she gets excited, there is a liquid. That liquid, this is what your prophet describing, and the proof, the color of the liquid. And he is saying it's coming from the ribs of the women. If you read with me, you will see it says that the ribs is exactly the chest place. Read with me. Between the backbone and the ribs, meaning the backbone or loins of the man and, uh, and the ribs of the women, which is referring to her chest. I'm not the one saying that. So this is why I want you to read. But you are rejecting to read because you cannot make it as something correct unless you ignore what your scholars and what your prophet himself is saying. So I want you please to read from, does it say really from the chest? Does it mean, does it say that, which is referring to hairy chest? I want you to read that word exactly. This is mean, it's not between. It is in that area, in the chest, the ribs. This is where that yellow texture is from for the women. Can you tell me what is that yellow texture of the women and what the ribs have to do with it? Mike is yours. Thank you very much. First of all, scientifically speaking, um, the verse... Let me jump in here for a minute. Before you, before you answer that question, just hold one moment. I, I got uh, a little technical problem here. Okay, let me fix this. Okay. All right, go ahead. Okay, I was saying, scientifically speaking, the first means that, of course, the sexual organs are located between the backbone and the rib. And this was revealed in the 7th century. And science just could not talk about it because they were at not that level, because of one that came with a message that was beyond the level of science or anything that came from man. Now, you read that hadith you are talking about that Ibn Kathir is referring to, and I will tell to you to be sincere enough to accept the truth when it is mentioned. If you go to that same hadith in the books of fiqh, go to a book since you are familiar with our books, then go to Bulugh al-Maram, which is a book of fiqh written by al hafiz Ibn Hadar al Asqalani, and you will see that hadith was also reported by Maimuna, the wife of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon her, radiallahu anha wa radaha. In that hadith, they were, you know, when a woman is in her cycle, they cannot pray, they cannot fast, and you know that better, since I know you must have relatives as Muslims. Then, those women, sometimes they would see certain liquids coming out of them, and they wouldn't determine whether this is part of the blood of their cycle, so as to abstain from praying or fasting or anything like that. 
And Prophet Muhammad responded to her and said, Go, and if you sit on a container full of water, and that liquid will drop in the water, if it has the color as safra, yellow, then you know it is not the blood of the cycle. Then you may continue to oh, take or to pass. That, now, let me jump in here, uh, guys. You are on this discussion. Since you are on uh, this discussion, I will jump in. And, and just before, uh, Christian friends, before you make your point, let me jump in here and say what you're talking about here is the formation of sperm. Uh, here's an error. Uh, the verse said that it is the drop that is emitted from the chest area. It's not referring to the testicle that descends from the abdominal area, not the chest. Here's the problem here. And I want you all to answer this. By definition, a drop is a small quantity of liquid that is separated from a larger body of liquid. Gravity acts upon it, and it drops. That's the term drop. But here's the problem. Here's why we have a contradiction here in the Quran. Drops are not in the human body. They are outside of it. Human blood flowing through the vein is not in drops neither in, in the uh, seminal fluid, which is emitted from the prostate. So the problem, the contradiction here is that drops are not in the human body because gravity acts upon it and it, it, and it drops. So that seminal fluid, it is the, the seminal fluid that carries the sperm from the testicles as it exits the body, then form drops. So what the Quran verse is talking about is not testicle, but seminal fluid, semi-fluid, or whatever you call it. What the Quran is talking about here is sperm mixture that has left the body during sexual intercourse. It is the drop that the Quran says is formed from between the backbone and the rib. That is obvious a blatant error. That's an error there. And it does say, I'm, I'm looking at the verse. It does say he is created from a drop emitted proceeding from between the backbone and the rib. My question to you two, how are you getting drops in the body when drops are not in the body? They're outside of the body. Absolutely. Uh, go ahead. Uh, let, 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 let me, uh, I, I, the, I, first as far as the drop is concerned. I think it's on my turn, all right? Go ahead. Yeah. Chris, Chris, your mic. Okay. Actually, if I heard him correctly, he mentioned the name of the book. This is the name of the book he mentioned. I will post the link you will see that what he said about uh, the explanation of the verse in there, it's not exist. Open the link and you can see by yourself. And if we go to the book of Arazi or any, any explanation he wants in Arabic, I can show you that even Arazi is giving us more details and those details, they are really scary. <laughs> even Arazi, he is saying that the rich of the women they are as a station for the sperm of the women. According to this, the Quran is saying that the women, she have a sperm. The women, she don't have a sperm. Who said that women have a sperm anyway? This is a huge mistake. And if there is something is coming from her ribs, what is that thing will create the baby? The womb of the women is down all the way down. There is no need to say you know what, from the backbone and the ribs, the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women. If you, if you see in here, the word between, between which means baina, it's not saying from between this location to this location. No, it says between the man backbone and the women ribs. It's not between the backbone of the same body, the same human. There's two humans. There's the man and there is the women. So the Quran is saying to us, that gushing fluid is coming from between two parts. The part of the man which is the backbone and the part of the woman which is her ribs. And this is a very, very huge mistake. And as you said, that you know, the, the testicle of the man, they are out of his body even. And they are not in the back, they are in the front. They are totally in the opposite direction and they have nothing to do with the backbone. And I'm sure our brother there, he will give me a speech about the new scientist discovery. You know, we go to school. I have degrees. I am not an, someone who is coming from the street. All of us, we go to school. I respect you. But, you know, what you are saying to me, it's against even what you are a prophet saying. 
You can open right now any explanation you want. I have all the explanation of Sunnah, and I'm assuming that you are a Sunni. You can start from Al-Faruz, Bahar Al-Ulum, Ma'alim Al-Tanzil, Al-Muharrir, Al-Bab Al-Ta'wil, Bahar Al-Muhir, Al-Tafsir, the Ra'i of the Quran, anyone you want. And you will see all of them, they agree with me, not with you. So it's very clear that you are trying to cover a huge mistake in the Quran, but I think you fail. Thank you. With all, with all due respect, I will appreciate the fact that you went to school and understand English. And Mr. The, uh, the moderator, it, it, it looks like you, you're taking a position in this debate. And I would like to correct uh, our, uh, the word draft as you explain. If you go back to the American Dictionary, or you go to Webster's, Webster's Dictionary, you will see that the word drop means this. And one of them is a very small quantity of liquid. It is not telling you coming from inside out or outside in. And in the body, you can find small quantities of many types of liquid. And I will leave my brother Nabil to go through those verses in order to show you where you are wrong, that you may learn something new tonight. I've probably heard the, the, the sentence as well, maybe the statement from Quran, you first zero baba ul bab. So if there is really a, a point which means in English that the Quran explains itself with itself. So this means if there's some a verse in which there's a dispute about it and there's a confusion to the Qur'an in another place where Allah is also talking about the same concept. So here we are in Surah Al-Dahr, which is uh, Surah number 76, and it is the uh, ayah, let's say we start with the first one, uh, saying, هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنْسَانُ حِينُ مِنَ الدَّهِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا إِنَّا خَلَقْنَا الْإِنْسَانَ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ أَمْشَادٍ لِلْتَّلِيهِ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا Which means, has there not been over man a long period of time when he was nothing mentioned? Verily, we created man from a drop of mingled sperm. So that's the term drop uh, for the moderator. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, uh, the usage of the terms and the terminology has to be also used in an honorable manner. So you don't have to talk about really uh, sperm as a sperm. You don't have to talk about sexual intercourse using the term sexual intercourse. But there is a, an inference to the concept and the inference so that you'll understand it. So this is the Quran and the context, whatever the Quran, the, the, you, you will not find anything in it that somebody may accuse the, uh, that there's some foul language in the Quran. So whenever you have right. a misunderstanding right. of a concept, let me finish this, whenever you have a misunderstanding of a concept, then go to another area. And go to another no area. Problem. And then you'll find, no uh, you'll find, no. uh, you don't have to go to Bulu and and all right. and 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 all that. Okay, I, I want one word from you. Now, this verse is talking about a sperm or a sperm, because what you are saying to me doesn't make sense. The Quran is saying this is a sperm. My own dafiq, which is going to create the baby. Read with me, please, Ibn Kathir. And you will see this is a hadith from your prophet. This is a liquid is going to create the baby. He's talking about creating the baby. And your God in the Quran always mentioned that al ma'u dafiq, this ma'u dafiq is the sperm. This is the sperm. Min nutfa, you know. And the woman, she don't have a sperm. If you read the description of that liquid, it's a fine texture yellow. So he given us a definition, what kind of liquid we are talking about, where it's coming from. Now let me ask you a question. What is the liquid which is yellow and fine texture is going to create the baby? The egg of the women is not a liquid. There is only one egg. The women have only one egg, not a liquid. Liquid is mean millions of drops. This is what the sperm is. Sper sperm is millions of drops. They walk together, they go inside the women when they have intercourse, and one of them is going to activate the egg. One of those drop of the sperm, millions of them will go inside, but one of them only will activate the egg, and there is only one egg for the women. There's no liquid of eggs, only one egg. And your God in the Quran insists saying, 
we created you from a drop which is a sperm. You know, this is why you are refusing to read all the explanation I'm mentioning to you because simply all of them, they agree with me. Isn't it funny that always we say to Muslims, you know, let us put a seat. So you know what? You cannot explain the Quran up to your mind. You have to go by the explanation of the scholars. When we give them the scholars, they say we don't go by scholars. It's very, you know, it's very weird. Are you going to take your scholars or not? Your mic. Let me, let me ask a question before you are getting respond. We're going to have four, 10 minutes to go. And uh, those who want to call in, if you have uh, questions for either side, now is the time to call in if you have a question at 347-326-9268. If you do have a question, we want you to, uh, to call in. Now, with that question, we'll, we'll try to take them as quickly as possible. Uh, there again, I, I do want to uh, ask the Muslim, uh, Muslim representatives to correct it. The Quran states that man is formed from the drop that is uh, emitted from between the backbone and the rib. Is that a true statement? Yes, a true statement as you have read it in the Quran and that you can see the reference of what's known as somatogenesis. And really I didn't want to go through what is a somite and how somites are formed and how the uh, testicles are formed okay, but here's uh, with point. kidney and all of it, and then the distance yeah, and that's of fine. the dead testicles that's fine. We won't have the body. Point, those who are the development. No. Right. We can go through this point. explanation, here's you know, with no problem with us. Used to admit. But I don't think you have, I don't know if you have uh, uh, that scientific knowledge or Mr. Prince have that scientific knowledge. Actually, it's very, very detailed. Uh, and again, like I said, uh, it's not only one verse, if one verse is giving some confusion for some people. I just want you to admit, I just want you to admit and agree with me to the listening audience, because everybody is listening to what's been said. You just agreed and affirmed uh, where the Quran states that man is formed from the drop that is emitted from between the backbone and the rib. I stated to you, I stated earlier to you that uh, drop, uh, are not in the human body. They're outside of it. So even if uh, that was the case, you still wouldn't have drops in the body. Second of all, the reason that's a contradiction or that's an error, and uh, the drops, this is a little medical terminology here, but the drops, the liquid, is not formed in embryonic development and does not begin that development until the testicle begins to mature. And that occurs after the birth of the baby and after the testicles have descended out of the body, out of the body. So therefore, the Quran is incorrect in its statement that a person is born from a drop that is emitted from between the backbone and the body. That's incorrect. And I bet you that differs, um, uh, sir, because you are not reading the Quran, you are reading your mind. And I'm going to tell you this verse clearly as he read it earlier. That means a drop of mingled sperm. Now, since our beloved brother uh, want to always refer back to what the scholar says, this is what the scholar says about this verse. As you may read with me, um, or you may listen and, and hear well. It says, I'm charging mingled is the female ovum has to be fertilized with the male sperm before a new animal, he refers to man as animal meaning a being, can be born. So therefore, the drop you were talking about, and I just corrected you, the word drop in English does not mean something coming outside all the time. It means a little uh, or volume of a liquid wherever it may be in the human body can be called a drop. And that is your American English telling you the meaning of drop. So why do you want to grasp on the word of drop as if you are dropping water from the bottle? This is how you look at it. But remember, this is your own interpretation, but the Quran no, does not, not mean it's what not you are saying. our own say. interpretation. Okay. Okay, listen. Well, right. First, right. I want you, I want you. 
and it's wrong. Go ahead, Christopher. It, I, I want you. I he, he is the one. I think he, that's your point. We're going to take some phone calls. Yeah, they hold it you know, he, he is the one who mentioned chapter 76, verse number 2. This is Ibn Kathir in the front of me. It says, the water of the man and the water of the, the women. The women, she don't have a water, sir. The egg is not a water. And when the, your God, Allah, makes say the water of the man and the water of the women, read Ibn Kathir with me. I'm posting the link. This is not my explanation. Don't tell me your English. I am an, an, an Arabic-speaking man. This is my native language. I grew all my life in the Middle East. It says, this, this is Ibn Kathir saying, I'm shaz akhlaqun wal masu wal masjidu wal masjidu shayu sarqadahu kifat which means it's mixed together. Qala ibn Abbas fi qawlihi ta'ala min nutfatin am shaz ya'ni ma ar-rajul wa ma'u al-mar'a So, it is the, the, the water of the women and the water of the man. It is equal water. What is equal to the water of the man? It is the water so of the women. Mean, what do you mean ma means water or liquid? Listen, listen. Ma, ma according to the Quran. Oh, okay. okay, what? Well, listen, listen, please listen. What is the water of the man? It is a sperm. Don't you agree? The, the water of the man is a sperm. You can drink and you call it water? Can you drink? drink? Come you on. Call it water? Here we are not talking about... Nobody is going to drink a sperm, man. We are talking about why creating a baby. So why do you want to focus on the word water instead of understanding the meaning this is, that you want to make over here? Okay, listen. This is the word. This is what it says about me. Do you want me to change the word for you? If I change it, you will say, you see, you are changing the word. The word water of the man, it's what? It is his milk or his sperm? Come on, and read the explanation. You are, you, you, are, <laughs> you are the one who, you know, the fluid, it's the water of the man, it's equal water. Water of the man, water of the woman. What is the water of the man? Simply, the sperm. And actually the Quran mentioned many places, saying the word clearly, nutfa, nutfa, yes. which is a sperm, not only water. So in here it's mentioned as water, in many other places it's mentioned as a nutfa. And now, what is the water of the women? This is the question. It's going to create a baby. The women, she don't have a water, will create a baby. The egg is not a water. It is one egg, not millions. She is not a fish. She have one egg, and the man has a sperm. The sperm, there are water. It has millions of sperm. They go, and they go, and they do that. Look, look for how long I'm asking him to, to read it because here he rejects, he don't want to read. Because Ibn Kathir is saying even that it's coming from the chest, you know. He don't want to read their scholars. Is it funny that he is going to mention to us an, the American science, but he don't want to read his own scholars' explanation. He don't want to read his own verse, but he want to go and say, oh, great, it's great. Great. you don't understand. Great, great, wonderful, wonderful. Since you want, you, you really like the term water, let us talk to you in this way. Now, when you open the egg, if you have the chance, or would you tell me what is in the egg of the woman? Is it a liquid, Ooh. a fluid, or what is it? Yeah, let me jump in here. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Let me jump in. Let me jump in here. Uh, and just wait, just wait. You want to take you all. Um, you know, he, he, just wait, just wait. Please, just wait. You know, he just phone said, call. Uh, then we need to take these calls real quick here and let them come in and say uh, what they have to say. Uh, we're going to open up the phone lines now and let the caller, 602, uh, you can address your question to either Christian Prince, Christian Representative, Christian Scholar, or you can address your question 602. Once 602 is done with this question, we'll go to 302, and then we'll go to 442, 973, and 360. We're going to take the call in order. If you have noise in the background, please take your noise out because I would not be able to do anything after that point. Uh, the, the switchboard would be off. So, uh, 602, go ahead. Okay, uh, uh, I hope you guys don't mind me uh, changing the subject uh, for a second. Uh, my question goes out to, I'd like to get an answer from uh, both sides. My question is pretty uh, easy. I'd like to know how many uh, days uh, it took Allah in the Quran to create the heavens and the earth. Because there's two different contradictions. Uh, maybe a Christian prince knows of it, I'm sure. And uh, there goes my question, and uh, this is Son of Abe, by the way. Okay. You know, first, there's two chapters in the Quran. 
One is saying that took Allah six days, and other verse taking it uh, took Allah uh, eight days. And you know, if you want, we can give the reference. We can show those the reference. But I would like people to concentrate on our topic, the one we are talking about, so we can finish it before we go to the topic. And I promise you, after we finish this one, we will go to the topic, which is how many days Allah created the earth seven, six, or. But in here, I want uh, I want the brother, uh, uh, our host, to remember what our guest he said that he agreed that the fluid of the woman is the egg. And now let us ask ourselves a very easy question. As long as he agreed that this is the water of the egg inside the egg, is the egg of the woman coming from her ribs? By the way, the water inside the egg, I never heard of the water inside the egg. If we say that this is a water, is that gushing fluid water? Is that coming from her ribs? You know, the Muslims, they will do whatever, just hide the truth. This is how always they do it, and this is why they do not agree right now with their scholars, because their scholars is the one who is going to show the truth. But suddenly, their scholars, they knew nothing. Are you equal to Ibn Kathir? He would say, today he is equal to Ibn Kathir, today he is better. But if you ask him in the mosque, he would say, A'udhu Billah, I am not equal to Ibn Kathir. He knows a lot better than me. Are you equal to uh, Ibn Taymiyyah? Are you equal to Al-Razi, Al Al the, the scientist Al-Razi? He will say, uh, today he is better than Al-Razi. But when he go to the mosque, he will say, A'udhu Billah, I'm not equal to Al-Razi. You know, so what we are seeing here, that somebody has to confess and say, What's the question? What? what the question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody forgot the question, huh? Okay, the question is, somebody asked you, said, how many days Allah took him to create the, the earth. Yeah, How many days point. Allah? Yeah, T take the mic please, you can answer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, talks about days, he talks about days in a different concept than you and I would understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the day of judgment. Is that one day as in 24 hours? Is this one day as in on the Vulcan uh, calendar? Is this one day on the lunar calendar? It's whatever Allah's day has decreed for it to be. So whether Allah says six days, or whether Allah says eight days, whether Allah says four days, whether Allah says two days, the knowledge of these days is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not with me, and it's not with you, and it's not with any a uh, person who's uh, following the solar system because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not, is not bounded by the solar system. So if it's mentioned in one day six days and it's mentioned in another day eight days, we still don't know that these days are 50,000 years or one day is 1,000 years. We don't know. This is, uh, as Muslims and everybody say, Ibn Kathir will tell you this, Raji will tell you this, Ibn Taymiyyah will tell you this, that this knowledge, the knowledge of human being is only limited by the information that's present at that time. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about days, it I does not mean the here. same days that okay. you and I understand them. Okay. But then, this, then, this is another question, actually. Here. This is another question. You know, just, 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 for, for the a second, please. A second. A second, please. You know, what, what, you know, the question is, how many days Allah, he said he created the earth and the sky? We are not asking how long or those days. If Allah, he said, six days in this chapter, and he says, eight days in that chapter, this is a contradiction. Because those are days for Allah. We are not asking Allah right now how long, how short they are. Either they are six, either they are eight. This is a very clear contradiction. Now, regarding how long is the day you will see in the Quran, one verse saying uh, that you are, you are mentioning the last day, the judgment day. But the Quran says to us one day for Allah, the normal day. How long it is? It says, you don't It is 1,000 year in our time equal to one day for Allah. This is the regular day. The day of the judgment, according to you, is the one is going to be 50,000 year. So we are not questioning now how long, how short it is. This is not the question. The question, one chapter saying six days, one chapter saying eight days, and this is a very clear contradiction, because days for Allah is equal, is the same. Those, those are the days of Allah. Isn't it funny, always when the Muslims, we say to them something, it's very clear, it's contradiction, they say, only Allah knows. So how you are a Muslim? 
You do not know anything. So why Allah is telling you even the days if nobody will know anyway? What the idea? Go ahead, sir. Well, we are Muslim by the grace of Allah. That's why we are Muslim. And uh, again, the answer is still in the pudding. And that is uh, that whenever Allah talks about days, just like you mentioned, that there are some days that are 1,000 years, there are some other days that are 50,000 years, and there are some other days that Allah says, does not mention how, how, how long they are. Let me ask you a question. And then there's the day of judgment, let me say, there's the day of judgment that was talked about يَوْمَ تُبَتَّنِ السَّمَاءُ بِهَيْرِ السَّمَاءُ which okay. means that the whole order of this universe that we have is going to change. We cannot limit these days. We Let cannot set about these days. Alhamdulillah, yeah. I mean, we humbly say that. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Uh, since we talked about days here, we're going to go to the next call. The Quran says the Bible uh, is not corrupt. It's not corrupt. Yeah, the Quran, the Bible, is not corrupt. Are you quoting the Quran or are you asking a question? Yeah, I'm, I'm saying to you, the Quran says the Bible is not corrupt. Tell me the verse. Tell me exactly where Allah says in the Quran that the Bible is not corrupt or corrupt. Tell me. Okay, uh, the Quran says that the Book of Moses, the Psalms, and the Gospels were all given by God in Surah 287. Also in four one six three, and also in two or three three and five forty six, it says about the tour in two eighty seven. We gave Moses the book and follow follow him up with a succession of messengers. So the Quran says that the book of Moses are not corrupt. My point is this: in Genesis chapter one, it tells us that in six literal solar days. God created the heavens and the earth. Now, if you're saying that one day could mean 10,000 years or 5,000 years, then we have a clear contradiction. The Quran is contradicting what the Bible says. Because the Bible makes it very clear that the evening and the morning were the first day. It didn't say anything about 1,000 years, 10,000 years. If the Quran says that the book of Moses and the Psalms and the Gospel were all given by God, and the Quran says some contradiction to that about the creation account, then we have contradiction somewhere here. Either, um, either we go with the Genesis account of creation that gives a six solar day, literal days of creation, 24 hour day, and by the session of evening and morning, or we go by what the Quran says. Actually, actually, right. brother, just let me let me let okay. me give you a hadith. Excuse me, excuse me, first If we may answer to what we we're going to go to the next call. We're going to take the next call too. Uh, yeah, just to help you, just to help you in the answer. This is Al Qutbi saying it clearly. This is your scholar. One day for Allah is equal to one thousand. Six days equal to six thousand. I will post the link for them so they can open and read. This is Al Qutbi explanation, chapter seven, verse number fifty-four. So, if your scholars saying this agreeing with us, I don't know why you are rejecting your scholars. It sounds like you are creating a new religion. Your scholars suddenly, they know nothing about Islam, but you know more than them. This is the link. I want everybody to open it and read it. So, how come, as we see now, the scholars of Islam agree with us, but they don't agree with the Muslims? Like, one of you have to be wrong. This is mean that you are a scholar, and all the scholars of Islam from today, they knew nothing. Thank you. Uh, and once Let's again... Take next call. Let's take the next caller. Next caller had a question, too. We're going to go down the line and take the calls. The next caller, go ahead. Um, hello, it's my turn? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I just want to ask a good question about Allah. What is Allah? Allah is like a human being, or is it not like a human being? If he got spirit in it, or is it not spirit? You know, could you please explain on it? Can I repeat my question, or? No, we can look at your question. question. Is Allah a human being or not? Is that your your question? No, no. He's saying he's a spirit or not a spirit. What he is? He's a spirit yeah. or not a spirit? This is the question. He is a spirit. He has a spirit. He has a spirit. The same God, right? No, we don't have the same God. Your God is not our God, sir. Your God, according to the Quran, he has no spirit, he is not a spirit, and he has a leg. And actually, 
all what we see in the God of Islam, if we go to Surah Al-Qalam, we will see nothing except a leg. He have hands, he have eyes, but all of them, they are attached to his leg. And he is not a spirit, and he have no spirit. So, your God, Allah, cannot be our God. Because our God is a spirit, your God is not. Your God is a leg. And honestly, none of us is going to worship a leg. And if you want me to show you a clear explanation from your prophet that your God, Allah, in the judgment they show himself as a leg, I will be happy to show you that. Let me give you the hadith. But again, and again the said, and according to Prince, with all respect to him, with all his knowledge about Islam, he's saying that our Lord, our Allah, our Creator, the Creator of the heaven and the earth, the one who Jesus said, according to the biblical, Ilahi, Ilahi, Lima Sabbukhtani, my Lord, my Lord, then he has reduced him to a leg. Well, thank you, but we humbly disagree with you on this. And Allah, whether you like it or you don't, he, my Allah and your Allah is the one who created you. He's the one who created the whole earth and whatever is on it. And what is Allah? We don't know what is Allah. Is it his spirit? Does he, whatever he says about himself, whether he has an eye, he has an eye that puts his glory. And, and, um, and uh, um, thank you very much for raising this. I think you have a leg, don't you? Well, uh, but according, so, according to Muslims, according to Muslims, excuse, okay. excuse me, and let me just finish. And if you, you believe me. you have a leg, I believe <laughs> also the dog has a leg. So are you equal to a dog? No. But you still believe you are a human being. Now you have an eye, and of course the snake has an eye. Are you a snake? You are not a snake. You are a human being. Therefore. The attributes of God as his attributes can never, ever be compared to any other attribute of that which he has created and brought into existence. And I will defeat anybody who can prove from the Quran that God is a leg. Get me the verse right now and I'm going to read it let to me, the audience me, as they may follow the word. Uh, okay, let me, let me uh, prove that to him. Please. Let me, let me ask you a question. Are you saying that God is not spirit? Okay. Well, you as a human being, do you have I a spirit? Hold on, Mr. Moderator. No. You know, when you teach sometimes, it is very good to take example from the person right in front of you because that's what they I, may I understand. I understand what you're saying. I'm not cutting you off. But I understand what you're saying about human being. I'm not so asking you do questions understand. not directed towards human being. My question is, are you saying that God is not spirit? My question to you, as an answer to your question is, you as a human being, do you have spirit? What does that have to do with me being God? I'm of not course, God. <laughs> because you are a product uh, coming from the creation, from as a creature of God. Then we may understand God better. My, and if you answer to that question, I'll give you a direct answer to your question. My, my, my point is, if God is not spirit, when the Bible said God is spirit, if the Quran said God is not spirit, then what is God? God is a spirit and a physical being at the same time. And now, that's why, hold on, hold on, Mr. Moderator, now you have to listen when you ask a question. This is why I was referring back to you as a human being thinking, asking you, what are you? Let me be clear on this. Let me get, you stated that God is his spirit and physical quality, right? Uh, God has a physical being. But his physical being, his attributes are mentioned in the Quran. But he has nothing to do with what he has created as far as comparison is concerned. You can't compare him to what he has created. He is nothing like what he has created. Therefore, All right, let me, let me, let me ask you something here. If God is uh, a pure simplicity, meaning that he has no potentiality at all, no possibility to not exist or to be anything other than what he is, pure existence and simple, if there was any physicality to God, then he would be undergoing change. Why is that? You, you follow my point? No, no. 
they <laughs> would say God is pure existence, a pure actuality. He has no potential of any kind. Mm -hmm. You see, I can prove what you're saying using your Bible, but that's not the topic today. Now, <laughs> anything, it is not demonstrated, not scientifically or physically, that anything that exists will have to go through changes. No. And you cannot prove that anything that exists will have to go through changes. That's one thing. And now you and I, as beings that are not perfect at all, of course, a perfect being as God would not be seen to us as I look at you or look at myself or anybody else. Okay. Because he can is perfect. That's yeah, why he is... Hold on. Excuse me, please. What, can, can I, I just time? Time? No, no, we, we got your point. We got no, your you point. don't get it yet. You don't get no, it yet. We get it. Care, you you are saying, please, please, let you are speaking for five minutes. I did not speak. I'm, I'm waiting. You don't you know? get my point no. yet. Let me finish. Okay. No, we got your point. We got your point. You you, you're my turn. Okay, great, great. Great. Okay, great. Okay, listen. He is okay, saying great. that Allah, he has a physical body, but his body I'm is not like you. Body. I did not say you body, sir. What, what is that then? You said being. physical. What is physical? Physical liquid? I said, I said being, not body. Okay, listen. When, when your prophet, he said, Allah will show his leg, you just said, you have a leg, the dog has a leg, is that, is that mean you are a, do a dog? You agree that Allah, he has a leg, that leg is physical or it is a liquid? I want you to open, please, this hadith with me and read. Your prophet there is speaking, this is the book 93, hadith al-Bukhari, hadith number 532S. Read it, you will see your prophet describing things. You will be able to see Allah. They said, how we will see Allah? He said, the same as you see the moon and the, the, the sun in the sky. When it's clear, this is how easy. And they said, what we will see in him? What is the sign? He said, you will see his leg. He will show his leg. So Allah, he has a leg. And this leg has to be something physical. And you just agree, agree, agreed that Allah is physical being. Physical being. And the Quran said that, that Allah, he is going to show his leg. Now if I ask you, Allah, he has a hand, he has a leg, he has an eye. You will say to me, okay, he has a body, but his body is not like yours. And this is what you were trying to say to me a second ago, when you said, okay, you know what? The dog, he has a leg. Are you a dog? You know? So you are comparing your God to us, trying to prove to us that the leg of Allah is not the same as the leg of us. This is not the problem. Your That's God, Allah, he has nothing except a leg. He is a leg. If I ask you, do Allah have a neck? You will say no. Do Allah have a chest? You will say no. With my respect to you, I'm a fine insult. Do Allah have a waist or a butt? You will say no. So what is left? He is a leg. There is nothing left out of this God except a leg, half two hands, and five fingers. And you will see in Sahih al-Bukhari, your prophet saying that Allah will carry the earth in the top of his five fingers. So he has a physical fingers. He has a real leg. Uh, I want you to remember that this show is recorded and all the Muslims, they are going to listen to you again. When you say that Allah, he don't have a physical body, Muslims will come to you and say, from where you got that? Do you have a proof? I am asking you right now for the proof. I am showing my proof, which is Sahih al-Bukhari, from your prophet, saying that you got Allah has a physical body for real and it is a leg. They ask him, are we going to see God? He did not say you will see him, a part of him. He said you will see Allah. How? He will show his leg. So, okay, what is Allah? I'm going Allah? to read the hadith for you, and I'm sorry. The hadith is saying, Antum satarawna rabbakum yawm al-qiyamati kama tarawna al-qamara laylat al-badari. That's the hadith you were referring to. We know it very well. Now, God has a leg, God has him, God okay, has read fingers. Listen, God, please, please. Hold on, read. sir. You have to listen no. now if you want to learn. No, no, brother, listen, listen. Yeah, just, just this way. Read the hadith after. Yeah. Sorry, I, I mentioned by mistake this hadith. This is hadith number 532C, not S. C. I please, know read the hadith you were referring. That's why you have okay, to read that one, please. You don't get okay, read it that one, please. Listen to me. Okay. You have to listen. Okay. We believe okay, that God, all these that he has mentioned in the Quran, or Prophet Muhammad peace be has mentioned in the authentic hadith, those attributes are true and we believe in them as they are, as it is mentioned by Allah and His Messenger. Now, I asked you yourself earlier to show you that I'm not comparing God with you. 
I said to you that you have a leg and the dog has a leg, but you cannot compare yourself with a dog. That's what I'm saying. Now, do not put words in my mouth. I did not say God has a body. I say a physical being because you and I have, have not seen God yet and inshallah we will see him yawm al qiyamati and so far said inshallah ta'ala you just listen we'll now see. and let me conclude inshallah right. for this question now cool. for for what you mentioned it is true that those attributes are attributes of God but if you are taking those references why can't you take the other reference that says laysa kamithlihi shay'un wa huwa samiu al basir Allah, I, I just told there you. Is, hold on, you have to hold on now and listen. <laughs> Allah, there is nothing like him as he is all hearing and all seeing. You, let if you are... Let me jump here. As, One moment, let me jump in here. I got your point. Let me, let me jump here and say, I think that you're trying to have it both ways. First of all, you say that God is absolutely simplicity. It's the right thing. That's your words. That's, that's your words, sir, not my words. Okay, but well, let me make let me say let me say this here. God is absolutely simple. God is simplicity. In other words, when I say that God is absolutely simple, a uh, God is simplicity. I'm saying to you, simple means without parts. That's what I'm saying. Simple means without parts. But what has part can come apart. Simple means indivisible. God is not capable of being divided. There is no place in which the fabric of his being can be torn or come undone. God's simplicity means that he is absolutely one. Not only does he have unity, but he is absolute unity. You see? You know, so therefore, you, know, you cannot contribute part to God. Now, great. And I, and no, I want to get one for, for the people, for me, people listening, and I'm, and I'm sorry, not, dear brother, just for people it's listening, not. you said you used the word simple and simplicity and whatever word you use. It did not come out of our mouth. We said that God no, I'm just is... My, I'm just making my case. Okay, one just thing, one thing. Now, Mr. Moderator, Mr. Moderator, you mentioned the fact that... Uh, God is not capable of being divided, and God does not consist of parts. That God is yes. pure existence, pure actuality. I'm saying to you, he has no, God has no potentiality. I'm saying to you that God is perfect. Now, if you know, something is perfect, or one is perfect, and you said absolute, the word absolute means a lot. The, the leg of Allah, just a second please. The leg of Allah, he's saying to us, the leg I, of I Allah think, is perfect. I think at least, the leg, at least I should finish my point before no, you, you take the point. You are taking your time more than me. Actually, he's giving you time more than you. Not, more because than you. Don't you have know? I'm the one who has answered. That's why I should take my time. Just, just wait. You know, I want you to read the hadith I gave you after this one because this one will explain. This is your prophet himself. I, I, you know, I understand that you show respect to your prophet. So let us go and see what your prophet is saying. Whatever your prophet is saying, he is right. Or what you are saying to us, Allah, he has a leg, but his leg is not like yours. Allah is not like anyone. I'm not asking you if he like me or not. The leg is a leg. Why Allah, he call it a leg? Simply because it's a leg, which means he walk. Why he did not say a wing? Why he did not say an eye? Why he did not say a nose? He is the one who named that part. He is the one who give it a name and a title, not me. So you don't come after me saying to me, oh, you cannot use it as a leg as you think. Well, he is the one who use it, not me. He call it a leg, it means it's a leg. So you Muslims to run from what your God is saying, you have to pay around the world, say, oh, you know what, it's not like a leg like yours, I don't care. This is not the question. Maybe it's a beautiful leg, maybe it's the most amazing leg, but it is a leg. Who name it a leg? It's your God. Who explain it as a leg? It's your prophet. And it's not up to you to say, well, this leg is different. No problem. I'm not saying my leg is the same. Well, my leg have a lot of hair. This is not the question. <laughs> I'm not comparing myself to your God, Allah, sir. I am Thank not you. saying... Thank you. Thank you. you. Yeah. But I think, I think you, 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 you want to focus on words and play with words. And that's not how we approach 
you know, when it comes to reading the words of God. That's not how we approach things. Unfortunately, we do not play with words. <coughs> you want to prove to me that my Lord, who is your creator and your protector, your sustainer, your provider, you he is want not my Lord. to reduce him. Okay, you want to reduce him to a leg and want to focus on the word leg. Now, it's not me. It's if I may ask, and this time I'm not, this time I'm not referring to God, but <laughs> can I, uh, is, is there any leg that has an eye or hands or fingers? No. This is why there is not. This is why, no, 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 no. This is, Please brother, listen. Get, this is why me, Allah. This is why Allah is not like no, any leg. Yeah. Let me this is why I think you said earlier that you went to school, and part of what you learn in school is to to learn how to listen. And I want to take my school anyway. It's an Arabic school. An Arabic school doesn't teach us that. Now I'm saying you want to reduce him to that, but you are not quoting the Quran, saying the Quran reduced him to a leg. That's what I'm saying. And what I told you and Mr. the moderator earlier is that God is a being with attributes far from looking like his creature's attributes. He is the absolute being and the beginning of everything. So why do you want to go ahead and give an image to him like what you have as you have not seen him and still cannot sense the being of God as a perfect and absolute being. Now let us be Great. frank and let, let us be answer. also open as intellectuals in order to debate this clearly. What I want you to do is, if you cannot compare yourself with a dog or a monkey, why do you want to reduce God as a perfect being to a leg as he mentioned in the Quran or in the Hadith that he has a leg or an eye or a hand or fingers? Why do you want to do to God what you do not accept to, to yourself as he is perfect and you are not perfect? Great. Let, now let, let me us use answer our you. common sense you. and debate this. Okay, let me answer you. First, I am not the one who compare myself to anyone. It's your God. When he named his, his leg as a leg, he did... He did put himself in a title, not me. I am not the one who named his part as a leg. It was him. Ask your God why he called it a leg if it's not a leg. So it's a leg, but it's not a leg. But this leg doesn't look like, like, like a leg. But this leg is different from your leg, but it's a leg. But so you are playing with the word. And you are saying, can you compare your, your leg with a dog? Yes, you can. You can say this is a leg of a human, this is a leg of a dog. This is a short leg, hairy, it looked like a leg of a dog. This is a leg of a human. We can compare, who said we cannot? We can compare as long both as they are legs. It doesn't make me really a dog, it doesn't make him a human, but both are legs and we can compare. We can count how many bones they have, they can, we can make a study, and this is how we can make a study. This is a leg of a human, this is a leg of a dog. You think you can, you, you know, are, you are insulted by saying, you are oh, you are Let me jump in. I think you are an Arab and you know what an Arab means in Arabic. Let me jump in, let's take another call real quick, see what that question is, all Go ahead, caller. The next caller, go ahead. Is that me? Yeah, it's you. Go ahead. Okay. I have a question for the Muslims. You said that there was no science known in that time about embryology. Well, actually, there was a Greek doctor in 150 A.D. with the last name of Galen, I believe, that had a theory much similar, if not almost identical, to Muhammad's. But I would also like to read you something out of the Bible, which is in the book of Job, which is over probably a thousand years older than Muhammad, that it does talk about embryology if you want to play with words like you guys like to do. Has thou not poured me out as milk and curdled me like cheese? Has thou has clothed me with skin and flesh and has fenced me with bones and sinews? So, and actually in the Quran, if you read the part about the bones, it says the bones comes first and then the flesh does, but the Bible actually gets it right by saying the flesh and the skin comes first. And I'm going to hang up and let you guys answer because my phone's almost dead. Is that all right? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. First of all, in order to answer to your question, I, I'm not saying that embryology was not there when the Quran was written. I'm saying science was not developed enough in order to explain things as they explain it today. And this is why 
the scientists, most of them, they refer to the Quran mainly to those verses talking about how a human being is created in order to say yes in the seventh century the answer was there but science was not as developed as to bring the explanation to that which was mentioned in the Quran and that also is a miracle to show that Quran came not for a particular time only not for a particular group of hum human beings not also for particular circumstances, but for all mankind, all times until the end of time. While, and I'm not going to jump in other books, but I'm just talking about the Quran. And today in science, they have done so far, mainly in the chapter Al-Mu'minun, the believer, in the very first uh, 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 verses, when Allah describes the sequences of human development or the embryo, then you can see that science could not, of course, uh, answer to all those questions at the time of Prophet Muhammad's Muhammad. And Jesus was there 563 years before Muhammad peace be upon him. Therefore, even if the Bible mentioned it, I'm saying to you that the, the knowledge was in the scriptures, but science was not developed enough in order to explain that knowledge which existed in the scriptures, if I may let answer me ask your question. question. Okay, let, let me make my part, let please. Let me make my part. Just a second, please. First, the, the, the verse he mentioned... Or he, quote. he said science. You know, I Muslims, they have all the... All the quote. Okay. For, for sure, they are American science, trust me. They will make, give you any name you want. But no, this is not the question. The chapter he mentioned about the Nutfa, uh, it says clearly that Allah, he created the human being from a clot and that the clot became the baby clot don't grow clot they are dead blood and they will never grow this is a chapter 23 verse number 40 it says summa khalaqna nutfa alaqa fa khalaqna alaqa mudgha fa khalaqna almudgha azman fa kasawna alidham lahman and you know it's very funny that the muslims right away they will give you scholars said scholars agreed you know what, this is something you can learn in sixth grade school. You do not need to be a scholar. You do not need to be a doctor. A clot will never become a baby. And the bones don't come first and then the flesh. And the, the sperm will never become a clot anyway. Because the sperm, when he... Hello? Hello? Then like we love Christian Prince, are you there? He's not there anymore, but probably his radio is on and he may hear what I'm going to say. And I'm going to read the yes, verses. Let, let, the let's find first. out. Is anybody else on? Is anybody else on? We're still on anyway. I still hear. Uh, I know. Uh, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you all. Okay, great. I, uh, let me ask, do I, do I have another caller? My switchboard has went out. Uh, is there another caller with another question? Okay. I, I think we might have lost connection. I don't know what happened here. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I think I lost Christian friends. I don't know what happened here. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Let's try him again because I want him to hear this. Okay, hold, hold, hold tight here. Do we have any more callers on the line holding? I want to make sure it's just not Christian friends. Okay. Uh, I don't know what happened there. I think like I lost Christian Prince. Uh, guys, a great segment. Uh, it was a good discussion on both sides. Um, I'm going to try to get him back in. <laughs> um, well, I, I really wanted him to hear these verses as he started mentioning these verses, but he really do not get the meaning. And if he was still recording, probably he would go back and listen to this broadcasting again in order to see the answer to the question. Okay. Uh, let me see. Can I get the Prince? Then you let me know if I if I may go ahead. Okay. Okay. Let me type a message. I'm gonna have to put him on conference call. Hello. Hello. Moderator. Hello. Okay. Hold on, guys. I'm gonna have to make a. Great friend, are you there? Hmm. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, sorry guys, I, I lost uh, my, my, my phone hang up and I could not call again, so I'm using a different phone now. Anyway, so I was saying, the prophets of Islam and the scholars of Islam explain, and they say to us clearly, 
that Allah is have a physical body. And all what you are saying to us, you are trying not to say, yes, he do. We can prove and we can show. And actually, I am posting the hadith in front of everybody, so everybody can go and see it by himself. It says it clearly that Allah will show his leg. All what you are saying to us, the leg of no, Allah... No, you're the point. That's not, that's not where we were, sir. We already discussed that. We were talking about the creation. And we were trying to answer to the question of that caller. Right, right, so right. You just, you just step back. Oh, okay, sorry. I, I that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. The Quran says that Allah created the from the sperm. The sperm will turn to be a clock. If you open with me chapter 23, the verse number 14, the one you mentioned, not me. You are the one who chose that one, not me. This is, I, I will, will pause and you can see explanation. And I will pause the translation made by Muslims for Muslims. And you will see that it says clearly that the sperm itself turned to be a clock. And this is very wrong. Number one, the sperm never turned to be anything. The sperm, after activation, the egg, it dies. It doesn't stay alive. And according to the verse, you are making, you are posting to us, or you are mentioning to us, you are saying that this sperm will turn to a clock. Let me, let me make, let me pause the verse, and they will post it for everybody in the, in the, in the radio show, if so everybody can read with us. This is the verse, number, chapter 23, verse number 14. It says, please, it's made for you in English. Then we made the sperm into a clock of concrete blood. Now, I want to ask you, according to which science in the world the sperm will turn to be a clot? The sperm. There's no egg in there. This is number one. Secondly, in here is speaking only about the sperm. So, if you will say, if you connect this verse to other verses in the Quran, the one we mentioned, about the sperm of the man and the sperm of the woman, this is a proof that Allah even considered the women water is a sperm too, proving our point in the other, other, other side. But the main thing in here, the, the, main, the main mistake, is how the sperm turned to, into clot, and that clot is a computed blood. Can you explain to us? Yes. Okay. Um, if you may read it again, because it is not saying the sperm uh, to a clot, but into. And the word into refers to a process. If you may follow me, to and into are different in grammar, in English. Now, into is a process, meaning the sperm goes through a process. What is the process? In order to be turned to a clot, which is, of course, uh, 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 of, of, of congealed blood. That's the point you're missing. You want to make the sperm a clot while the Quran is telling you into a clock, meaning going through a process. And that process is the process of the sperm being introduced to the, uh, to the egg. And that then the fertilization will come and go through that process in order to make a clock. And once again, the word into is important, as you may hear from my brother Nabil. You see, after the process of fertilization, and that is the joining of what's called the pronucleus with the German, germinal vertical of the follicle, this is when you get fertilization. Then you have what's called the 246, 248, and then the blastula. The blastula stage, then the murula stage, then the blastocyst. The blastocyst is what would be congealed blood, because it's all made from what's called the uh, blood islets that are present on the outside of the blastula and also the inner cell mass, which is also made from blood islets. So, in fact, there is no better description about this process better than the one that's present in the Quran. There is no better description of what the science now has confirmed that's present in the Quran if you really understood what was in the Quran. Okay, thank you. Well, I want you to open with me, please, Mr. Kassir. I want you to open with me, Mr. Kassir. Why are you always telling me back you want to go to Mr. Kassir? What's wrong with Mr. Kassir? Mr. Kassir now is a Jewish guy. When you go to Mr. Kassir, you have to be the level of Mr. Kassir. And then you have to think somebody else and put... It's my turn to answer, please. Mr. Kassir doesn't understand what the blastocyst was. Mr. Kassir doesn't know what the murula was. Mr. Kassir doesn't know what the murula was. No, 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 no,
How come Ibn Kathir agree with me? How come? How come all Islamic scholars agree with me? What's wrong with Ibn Kathir? How Ibn Kathir suddenly, suddenly, let me let me speak. Suddenly, suddenly, Ibn Kathir because you wanted, you were looking for some something that is going to be yes, yeah, that fits your own. Let me let me talk. Let me talk. Let me talk. You don't want people to hear, and there are people, they are listening, they are judging. I am giving a proof. The scholars of Islam agree with me, not with you. When you gave me the explanation now, your brother, he said, into, into, right? Read with me, Ibn Kathir, he is saying the following, that the Nutfa, read with me, please. I, I give you the link. I hope they are posting it for you. I want you to open with me. Read with me, please. It says, and then we take the cloth into a little loom the cloth into a little loom, and then he and he says, saying, we made the nutfa into a cloth. So he made the nutfa itself a cloth. This is very wrong. The cloth, will, it's not the nutfa, and the nutfa do not transform to be a cloth. Nutfa is simply very simple DNA message. We activate the egg of the women, have no blood, it is not a blood, and has nothing to do with the blood. And, and I want but you to, please, I don't in front really of understand. everyone... Well, you don't really understand the process. You are not describing the process. You don't know... It. It's yeah, not I don't mean. know what's your background, it's, but it's let me tell you this. Thing. I do have it's a PhD in, 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 in cellular and molecular biology, and we have also with us, the Mohamed okay. Dean, who's also a doctor in... Uh, uh, and he has a lot of extensive research on this issue. So uh, yes. usually what you're describing is totally uh, out of your field that I know that for sure from the way you're talking. That's one thing. The second is that you're is trying to say that the Quran says so. Now, there, we have is two individuals in this room that we have <laughs> the credentials and we teach at universities, and we know that what's in the Quran is better, there's no better description. Now, you want to go back and tell me this and this and this and this. No, I'm not saying that. Listen. I am not saying that. You, you. You I'm showing you the scholar. It's not, it's not for you to listen. I'm telling you, in this room here, there are two individuals who, who on a day in, day out, teach this process at, at medical institutions. And what you are describing is wrong from a medical process. So don't try to say that that's what the Quran is saying. You're trying to put it well, in the Quran. Well, you know, it's very clear, my dear. It's very clear. You don't want to read your scholars' explanation. You are trying. You are trying. Okay. Listen. How the little loop little oh, little became, um, became, became a flesh? One at a time. One at a time. Yeah, what I would say you may also consider the time, and I know it's been two hours, and uh, instead of arguing, I think the audience should actually benefit from this if we could really have a sincere and intellectual debate. And I think it's getting too late right here in Memphis. I don't know about you all, but uh, we would like, with your permission, uh, to probably end it here, call it a day, and if you want us some other day, some other time, we will be available if you really... Uh, call us on time, and also that we may have time to get ready for any type of discussion you would like your audience to hear. And right now, I'm showing 10.21, and we started at 8 o'clock, and we took the responsibility to come to your show for two hours. With all due respect, we would like to ask you, with your permission, if we could uh -huh. call it today and conclude, okay? Okay. We can't we can force you to stay, guys. You know, I'm glad that we have this conversation. Mm -hmm. And I hope you nobody get upset or angry. You know, we are trying to prove our point, and you have the right to defend your faith. It's your faith, so nobody can blame you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm I'm glad to talk to you, and I hope we will, we will talk again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. I tell you guys, if we want to, uh, Christian friends, I know you 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 your schedule is pretty tight. And let me say, I do appreciate uh, all of you all coming out tonight, uh, calling in tonight, and to gauge. I think it has been. Uh, a really very in-depth discussion, uh, one that uh, 
probably would need uh, an extension, but uh, time uh, would not afford us that tonight. Uh, I can uh, pick up again at another time. Uh, this show airs at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday, and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, I do have a guest on the show next Friday night at 7 p.m. Um, that would be on for probably about 30 minutes, so uh, I don't know whether or not you guys are busy on next Friday night, but we can pick up another uh, debate. We can uh, pick up on what we left off at 8 p.m. next Friday night, if that's good with both sides. Uh, there again, I wouldn't want to superimpose. And, uh, well, I well, you know, we wouldn't it's, go. it's up to those gentlemen, and uh, if, they, if they agree right away, we can schedule that day, you know, for now. No problem. Yes, yes next we'd, Friday be to, we'd be willing to answer to your invitation any time, but remember, you just called us yesterday, and we really did not want to make this in vain. That's why we came, and we have to cancel okay. our class in order to uh-huh. come to the show, and uh, which, of course, we really appreciate your invitation. At some other time, you have Dr. Muin Dean's number. Call Dr. Muin because he's the one in charge with the media committee and discuss uh-huh. with whatever he agrees with you. We go with that. The next Friday night at 8 p.m., the same time, does that, is, could you be available next Friday night? You know, let, let, us, let us see first, you know, what they are planning to do. And because, honestly, I don't care much for, uh, with my respect to you, brother, I don't mean anything, you know. Okay. But I don't care much for, you know, radio show or anything. Because always it's in, in the same way, you know, you show them the proofs, you prove them wrong, and they still didn't want to read the proofs. I want to debate people who want to read my proofs, not to say to me, give me a speech. So I prefer if we can get from their side somebody who will read what we will provide them, not somebody who will say, say to me, you are wrong, you understand it wrong. You cannot, in Islam, explain yourself from yourself. You have to give reference. You have to give approves, and those approves have to be the scholars. I am not the one who is allowed to explain the Quran. He is not the one who is allowed to explain the Quran. All what we did in this debate is, are you finishing this or you give it another lecture now? No, you can go, brother. If you, if you are in rush, it's okay. I'm just, I'm just talking to the brother here. If you want to if you wanna have a debate, we have at least to agree to read the proofs, to read the reference. Isn't it, isn't it sad that all the, the, the proofs I, I showed, none of you accept to read, simply because those proofs prove me right, prove you wrong, and this is why you're rejected to read them. Okay, when you so, want to tell us today, say, you have to tell us ahead of time, and you have to say what are your, you know, the books that you're talking about and all of these things so that everything will be available and ready. <laughs> you don't come yeah. in and just uh, drop out of the blues and say, you know, we want to do this and we want to do that. So you, this you, is why it's a debate. You, I'm not trying to give you my In our fairness to Chris Prince, he can't give you a transcript a week early of his... Uh, Rebuttals and debate and his talking points. I mean, uh, that's, Mr. Moderator, that's, I think it would be wise enough uh, if you could call Dr. Nguyen tomorrow and discuss with uh-huh. him for any other debate and whatever you agree with him, we go with that. We are so organized okay. that we want things to follow really the way they should be. So please get in touch with Dr. Nguyen t- tomorrow as you have his number and for whatever me. issue you want and then whatever he tells you will be fine with us as well, okay? That was very yeah. nice talking to you all, and you have a good night. Okay. Thanks, guys, for coming. Uh, thank you, Christian Prince. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Chris Prince, for coming. Uh, I, I think you've done an excellent job there. You know, I agree with you. If, if they're not willing to read the evidence, the proof that you give, I'm going to try to schedule it next Friday night at uh, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, you know, if you, if you want to do that, tell me from now, so I know that Friday. You know, uh-huh. I want I want the date for sure because you know, in your side it was showing one date. You know, for me, if I did not open your, my email, I was not going to call you anyway because uh-huh. in your side it was showing tomorrow. You see, there's a mistake in there. So I for me, I thought, yeah. yeah. So for me, I thought, you know, okay, you know, there's another date. Uh-huh. So I, actually, I, 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 we were lucky that uh, to open my email in the same time of the debate start, you know, the show start. So uh-huh. I told you, otherwise I would not know. 
And, and by the way, take my advice. Those people, they will never read. This will be playing their games. When they are debating someone as an American, he do not know. They are giving all kinds of speeches. A scientist proved to us in America, in Japan, in Thailand, in Chicago, and, 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 but all of this is false. You know, this is your scholars. This is what he said. If you are really an honest man, read. And this is why you see they just want to run. Did you notice? The other one is asking for a living, not us. Right. Because simply, they could, they could not make it. They are shocked. I think you kind of took him for a ride. That <laughs> <laughs> you know, are you going to post the, the, the whole recording in the, in the site? Yeah, it's gonna, once, I, once I hang up, once me and you are done, because we're still springing, we got two minutes left, but once I hang up, it's going to, uh, the system would uh, save the file, and it will be post probably in another five minutes, and you'll be able to listen to it. Or another okay, three thank minutes. you very much. So people yeah. can go and get it. I, I want to say thank you for, uh, for uh, inviting me, and I hope you did enjoy having me. I enjoyed it, man. I tell you, you're, you're, you're great. <laughs> you know where to find me if you need me. Anything. I do. I'm going to okay, spend time for 8 p.m. on next Friday night, and we'll just see what they say, okay? Let, let me know. Let me know. For me, I, I consider them they will not come because I, I can tell you from now, they are terrified. They saw something they are not ready for. This is why they start saying, oh, we are not ready. He told us yesterday. And, you know, a scholar in Islam, he does not need to be ready. You know? Uh -huh. you, don't, you are not ready about knowing your God. You are not ready about knowing your book. <laughs> now you need to be ready. You know, for, if you are not ready, why you show up? Who is hurting you? you know, who, who told you to come? Say, I cannot, you know? Well, I think I contacted them on, on, on Wednesday there because, uh, matter of fact, they just got my phone call back, but... Uh, it's an excuse, for, it's an excuse for, for their loss. No problem. Anyway, brother, thank you very much. God bless you. All right. May the Lord support you in your mission. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. God bless you. Uh, they exposed the lies of Muhammad and learn how to be tough on this cult and tough mean to be bold to say it as it is not as they want not politically correct being politically, politically correct is an illness is a weakness is somebody he is hiding something. He's been forced to say something. So if you are a Christian, say things as it is. Yes, we love the Muslims. It doesn't mean we will let the Muslim die and go to hell. Loving the Muslims is saving the Muslims. It's not the opposite. So when somebody, he says to you, uh, that you are speaking a root, this is not how a Christian should be speaking. A true Christian is the one who say things as it is, and that will make it truth for sure.